A wave of dengue cases have been reported in many countries in Latin America, leaving experts worried. Brazil and Argentina are among the countries facing such spikes, but even smaller countries are seeing an uptick in the number of cases. The key question, of course, is what governments are doing to combat this rise. The official response has been quite mixed and, in fact, is dependent on the ideologies of these governments as well as their approach to public health. We go to Anna for more details. Anna, thank you so much for joining us. So, uh, you know, cases of dengue from uh, being reported, especially in many parts of Latin America, record numbers in many cases. Uh, so maybe could you first give us some kind of a survey of what is the kind of incidence, so to speak, of these cases? Well, as you said, Latin America and many, many countries in Latin America are reporting record numbers of dengue. Uh, among those, of course, Brazil, uh, which has said that uh, this is the highest number that they have ever seen since they have been tracking outbreaks of dengue in the early 2000s. But also other countries like Argentina, like Peru, uh, they've all been seeing uh, multifold increases in the number of cases compared to what they're usually seeing. Uh, many of uh, so many of the experts who have actually reacted to this uh, have put this uh, in relation with climate change and with the changing uh, pattern on rainfall. Uh, so of course, you know, it's uh, the spread is essentially uh, supported or actually promoted uh, through these kind of changes that uh, makes it possible for mosquitoes to circulate more easily and then reach more people. So. Uh, this is kind of the situation right now. Uh, what is interesting to observe in these cir circumstances is the different approach that countries have taken. And of course, you know, uh, the news uh, have been very rich uh, in the announcements that uh, governments, ministries of health have recognized that the problem is here. Uh, but the response uh, has uh, has been different depending on the position of the uh, of the government, if we can uh, put it that way. Right, Anna. So uh, let's take that point you talked about, and there are maybe two cases you can look at Brazil and Argentina. So, starting with Brazil, what has the kind of response been? We know that the Lula government has been quite proactive on issues of health, and so has it sort of carried over to this issue as well? Well, uh, yes. So, uh, essentially, we have seen a, a very uh, significant shift in how health is approached in Brazil since Lula took, uh, took office. Uh, and, you know, if we look only a couple of years back, we had Bolsonaro. Uh, with this big drive uh, against vaccination for COVID-19. Uh, and one of the things that has influenced how the response to the dengue fever is going right now in Brazil is essentially this. So in Brazil, we did have uh, the government, a, a government, we do have a government which is willing to, uh, you know, to undertake vaccination. But the drive is still lagging, and that's uh, because of a number of reasons, one of which is this... Uh, Essentially, the doubt that uh, people are still feeling and uh, against vaccination, uh, which has been promoted by by the past government. So this is also something that the local media have reported, including including Brazil de Fato, uh, which uh, of course you know means that uh, the vaccine is not not reaching all of those people who it should reach, and especially uh, the groups that have been targeted as uh, as most important. This includes children up to 14 years of age. So uh, it is a problem, but uh, if we compare this to uh, to Argentina, on which we can talk later, uh, of course, the uh, recognition and the approach to uh, to the problem has been uh, has been much more uh, mar much more constructive. Right, Anna. So, of course, the next question then is about Argentina, because we know Javier Milei has come to power uh, with an agenda that is very uh, anti-state. It is very uh, you know, focused on cutting down services as much as possible. We, I think we already talked about some of the health impact of that uh, of that new government. So, how is this crisis being addressed by that government? Well, that again uh, depends on where uh, which government we are talking about. Of course, the national government of Nash uh, of uh, of Millet, uh, has been uh, to say <laughs> to put it very very nicely uh, has been lagging in the response that uh, that should be taken. Uh, but interestingly, uh, some of the provincial governments, including that of Buenos Aires, they have had uh, a, a better a better approach to the thing. So now, uh, you know, if we look at the numbers, uh, some of the reports say that um, the incidence, the okay, so the number of infections of dengue that we uh, that uh, people in Argentina have seen is about two hundred times higher uh, than uh, than to, pre to you know to, to previous seasons. Uh, it's of course you know uh, it's it's a lot. So uh, what um, 
what the provincial governments have asked the national government to do uh, is to essentially pick up this um, this vaccination campaign uh, and ensure that uh, it's uh, it's uh, the vaccine is made available to everyone in in all the places. But of course, you know the the response has been very different. So uh, it has fallen on deaf ears, if we can put it again that way. Uh, there hasn't been much of an uptake on the on the national level, and that's uh, essentially not so surprising, given uh, given the amount of attention that uh, the importance of public health and including the health system uh, has been, you know, the the amount of importance this has been given by by the new government in Argentina. Thank you so much, Anna, for that update. Since the UN Security Council resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, protests have broken out across the Arab region. Jordan, Morocco and Egypt are among the countries where people have gathered in the thousands. Their demand is pretty simple, an immediate end to Israel's genocidal war on Gaza. Since these countries also have diplomatic relations with Israel, the severing of these ties has also been a prominent demand. What is driving these protests? We go to Abdul to find out. Abdul, thank you so much for joining us. So, protests have uh, continuing in Jordan. It's been three or four days right now. Jordan has been become one of the hubs of the protests uh, in the region, also taking place in Egypt, of course, we'll go to that. But tell us a bit about the situation in Jordan itself. Well, Prashant, as we all know that in Jordan, uh, ever since the war began on October 7, there have been massive protests uh, uh, going on. Uh, uh, initial, in, during the initial days of war, the protests were very uh, large, which basically shaped the overall politics, uh, Jordanian response, uh, particularly vis-a-vis, -vis, because Jordan has a diplomatic uh, relationship uh, with Israel. It signed a peace treaty in 1994. So unlike several other country, uh, countries, it has much more active uh, diplomatic relationship with uh, Israel. And that uh, basically was at the center of the uh, the protests and that continues to be this uh, the case because that treaty uh, that relationship with israel is not uh, accepted by majority of the jordanians uh, given the fact that there is a historical route uh, between palestine and jordan apart from uh, uh, jordanians having a strong feeling of uh, 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 in support of Palestinian nationalism, in support of Palestinian cause. So uh, 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 protesters have primarily gathered uh, both on the uh, uh, Jordanian border with the West Bank, occupied West Bank, as well as uh, uh, in Amman, in the capital city where the Israeli uh, embassy is located. And they basically, in the uh, at least in the recent protest, uh, the protest which is ongoing for last four days, they have been consistently uh, demanding complete uh, 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 kind of uh, breaking down of relationship between Jordan and uh, 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 Israel and uh, uh, complete implementation of uh, the ceasefire resolution, which was adopted by the UN Security Council uh, earlier this week. Um, uh, of course, uh, the protesters have tried to storm uh, the Israeli embassy as well. There is a U.S. embassy nearby. There were protests there also. Uh, and uh, they have been basically trying to uh, uh, kind of pressurize the Jordanian government uh, to kind of uh, take much more proactive role uh, in kind of finding uh, peace in the in Palestine and also kind of uh, attempt a uh, kind of uh, uh, enacting some kind of boycott to Israel for its occupation and its genocide of the Palestinian people. Right. Of course, Abdul, the other country where this is taking place is Egypt also. And it's interesting, like you said, that the two countries where protests are really building up are the two which have diplomatic ties with, uh, Israel, what do you call it, with Israel. So could you maybe talk about a bit about the protests in Egypt, as well as how you see this trend of uh, the question of normalization itself. We know that after Jordan, some countries also recently normalized. There's been a pushback against that from the streets as well. Well, Prashant, uh, uh, there are protests in Egypt also. And Egypt, by the way, was the first country which had signed peace treaty with, uh, first Arab country which has signed peace treaty with Israel way back in 1979. Uh, so uh, despite the fact that there is a, a, a active ban on any kind of pro public political protests uh, in, in Egypt, people have defied government norms and come out and protested, uh, demanding ceasefire, demanding uh, severing of uh, breaking the relationship with uh, Israel, 
and so on and so forth. But the, uh, the protests are not limited to Egypt all, uh, also, by the way. There are uh, very large-scale protests going on in different cities in Morocco, which was the latest country which basically normalized its relationship with Israel uh, under the so-called Abraham Accords, uh, basically a U.S. diplomatic push to be, uh, in support of its uh, ally in the region Israel. And uh, Morocco, uh, the protests are quite vibrant and they have primarily they have been mobilized by the, uh, the group which basically came up against uh, the government normalizing relationship uh, with uh, Israel. Uh, so there are protests in Morocco, there are uh, reports of protests in Tunisia as well. Uh, and of course, in the past, there have been protests in uh, Iraq and in several other countries. And uh, as far as the normalization process is concerned, of course, uh, there is a complete uh, public, uh, you can say, uh, dislike for such kind of uh, measure, which was taken by the governments in this region, some of the governments in, the, in this region, under the, uh, the US, uh, you can say US pressure. Uh, but since the war breakout has has broken out, uh, broken out, sorry, and uh, since the pop, uh, people have mobilized on the streets, they have been quite vocal and quite articulate about all such normalization process, and that has led to effect, you can say, a large number of countries which are considered to be on the verge of signing uh, some kind of normalization deal with Israel have backed out. Uh, of such moves and there is hardly any uh, possibility of any such normalization until there is a concrete step taken not only to end the current war in Gaza but also to basically find a solution for the Palestinian issue which would mean creating an independent Palestinian state uh, with Jerusalem as its capital. That has been the demand of most of the uh, people and, and also uh, because of the popular pressure re uh, in lately, most of the governments have also been forced to take uh, such demands uh, with Israel and with the uh, on the international forums. Right, Abdul, thank you so much for that update. And that's all we have in today's episode. We'll be back with a fresh daily debrief tomorrow. In the meantime, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org, follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you.